Okay, I'm going to provide a brief tutorial about how to compose the After Effects accent animations. So I'm going to select New Composition, set it to 20 frames. It's 1920 by 1080, which is the standard uh, HD size, and then press OK. And then if I go to my project, I'm going to find uh, both the Illustrator file that has my logo in it and a separate uh, gradient file. So I'm going to select File, Import, File. And I'm really only interested in grabbing the logo layer from this because I'm going to zoom into the logo and because it's in vector format, I want it, uh, it will be able to zoom in infinitely and still maintain its crisp edges versus you have a little bit of that quality loss with uh, raster images. So that's why we're importing both the Illustrator vector file and the separate gradient because gradients don't transfer perfectly uh, from Illustrator into After Effects. It's not a uh, seamless workflow. So I'm going to select Composition Retain Layer Sizes. I'm going to press Open. I'm going to double click into this composition and shift select the three layers, select layer, create, create shapes from vector layer. It's going to tell me that some of the content isn't supported, which we expected as much because gradients don't transfer perfectly from Illustrator. So I'm really only interested in maintaining the uh, top layer one, which has my logo. So I'll keep layer one outlines. The other layer just has my swatches in it, as you can see, uh, which are these swatches over here. And then the other layer is just the gradient. So I'm going to shift select the others and delete them. So it just has my logo. What I can do is go to my gradient file drag and drop that into my project space, which is this gray area underneath, which drops it over by our layer one outlines, which has our logo. We'll just drag it underneath so that the logo is visible. I'm deselecting both layers, so that way I can create a new shape layer. Using the pen tool, I can set my stroke from anywhere between 15 and 20, up to you. And you'll see that there's a star next to my pen tool, which indicates that it will be creating a shape versus if I had a layer selected and I had been in like mask mode, it would create a mask um, around my object versus creating an independent shape. So that's why I'm selecting out of my two layers, creating a new layer with this. The fill should be set to none. So you're gonna have to option click through to cycle through. So using the pen tool shortcut G, I'm clicking a singular point, holding down shift and clicking a secondary point. Okay, so we've created the one line. So now we're going to expand it, expand contents, and we're going to add a trim paths to it, which will allow the line to animate and kind of diminish over time. So if you press the little play button next to add, it's across from contents. If you don't see it right away, try toggling this button in the lower left hand corner. Uh, that will pull that up and then add the trim paths. Expand the trim paths and set a stopwatch to initialize the keyframes for the end value and set it to 0%. You can adjust the mountain slider to make it bigger or smaller. So you can see the one second mark, two second mark, and so forth. Move the playhead forward a little bit. Set the start to 0% as well, which is really, it's already set. So you're just initializing that stopwatch keyframe. Move the playhead forward a bit more. Set the diamond keyframe for end, setting it to 100%. Do the same for the start value, moving the playhead forward a little bit more to around the two second mark and setting that to 100% as well. 
So you can see it animates over time. If I hit my space bar or hit the little play button over in the preview area, you'll see it animates from top to bottom, but as a firework goes, it kind of radiates from the center. So we want it to emanate outward. So if I click over in this gray area, drag over and select all of these, it kind of creates a bounding box or selects all of them. Alternatively, you can shift click each of these and then right click on one of the keyframes to pull up the keyframe settings, select keyframe assistant and select time reverse keyframes. So now that basically just gets the uh, time to reverse essentially or reversing the order of the animation. So when you play it back, it goes from bottom to top versus from top to bottom. So now what we'll do is if you press Y, we want to create an axis point where it rotates from the base of the line. So Y pulls up this pivot point. You can grab it from the center of the artboard and place it at the base of the line. Just make sure it's vertically in line with your line. Then what you can do is go back to the selection tool, press Command D to create a duplicate, press R to pull up the rotation settings. If you select the 0.0, .0 degrees, you can set it to 90 degrees, which just causes it to basically go at a right angle from the initial line. I'll press another duplicate, Command D. This one, again, will press R. You can also type in rotation, and that pulls up the rotation settings as well. You can set this one to 180. And so we're just adding 90 each time. I'm going to select layer three as well, press Command D. Pull up R for the rotation settings, pressing just R on the keyboard, setting this to 270. And so now when I play it back, you'll see they radiate outward. I'm going to shift select layers one through four, press Command D to duplicate the whole set of them to create kind of a more starburst type shape instead of an X or plus um, sign shape. With these selected, I can just grab layer five and then pull them up since they're already kind of shift selected. Then I can press R again and that pulls up the rotation value. Since they're all selected, rotating one of them rotates all of them at the same time. Instead of just directly clicking into the 0, 0.0 right here, I'm going to drag so it moves them all simultaneously. And I'm going to move it until it reaches the 45 degrees. So we're doing it in clean increments. So now when I play back, you can see it creates like a whole starburst. If I pull up the color settings for shape layers five through eight, I can change the alternating lines to a different color. And fortunately over here, I have my swatch colors. So I'm going to find out what the value is for this like light yellow. I'm double clicking into the fill color, copying that color hex code, coming over here and replacing this white value with the light yellow. Can always change the white of the alternating ones as well alternating lines to like pink but that's up to your discretion i'm just going to toggle these closed now if i shift select at shape layers one through eight i can right click and select pre-compose and call this firework and then I'm moving all the attributes into a new composition to kind of minimize the amount of layers I'm working with, making it easier to duplicate and reuse. Pressing OK. This is my firework. If I press Command D, I can duplicate that firework. And if I grab the timeline layer, I can pull it back. So that way it kind of staggers the time at which they occur. If I also press S on my keyboard, that pulls up the scale options. So I can scale the secondary one up a little bit more. I can also type in the word scale in the search bar if I wanna pull that up in a different format. I'm also gonna type in the word position, or you could press P on your keyboard 
and that also pulls up those position properties. I'm pulling this down and moving it to the left and the right. Now if I press uh, S one more time, I can decide if I want that even bigger. I could also press R on my keyboard or type in rotation into the search bar, rotate it a little bit, and kind of just play with, there's really no uh, wrong placement as long as maybe you leave a little bit of central area for the main logo since that is the most important part of what we're trying to highlight here. So now when you scrub through you have the one starburst and then the second starburst.